I'd like to call the uh, town council meeting to order. Can please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing? to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Councilman Marker will now read the names of any uh, police officers that have been murdered on the job uh, since our last meeting. Detective Ryan Park of the San Diego Police Department, California. End of watch Friday, June 4th, caused death vehicular assault. Detective Jamie Huntley Park of the San Diego Police Department, California, and of watch also Friday, June 4th, caused that vehicular assault. Pastor Sluter. Thank you, Rick. Our precious Heavenly Father, we're saddened by the loss of these officers in the course of time from the last meeting. We just pray that you would, would grant your unique comfort and strength to the families and friends that are grieving. We ask again tonight for your grace to be upon our community, upon our leaders, and upon this meeting tonight. So this will give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Can we have the roll call, please. Council Member Jim Marker. Present. Council Member Larry Bala. Present. Council President Ruth Reifa. Present. Council Member Melissa Robbins. Present. And Council Member Tony Hobson. Present. All right. Each member received a copy of the June 1st minutes. What's the pleasure of the council? Move to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. Could we have the claims, please? Claims 33582 to 33800 in the amount of $872,910.65. Make a motion to approve as claims read. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. Could we have the announcements, please? We have several announcements this evening. Uh, the next regularly scheduled council meeting is tentatively set for Tuesday, July 6, 2021 at 7 p.m. There will be a study session before the meeting at 6.30. One will follow if necessary. It's a tentative meeting depending on uh, what uh, some other meetings leading up to uh, to that meeting. So be sure and watch the calendar online to find out if it's actually gonna happen. Item number two, the redevelopment uh, commission meeting is being moved to June 29th. There'll be a study session at six and the meeting will be then at 6.30. Item number three, the town council will also schedule a special meeting on the 29th at 7 p.m. And in part during that meeting, we will be uh, opening the bids for the sidewalk project that we've been talking about for uh, the next months. So um, any other communication on the communications? Uh, we did uh, we did go, uh, we, were, we were in the process of re, uh, refunding, which is actually called refinancing um, uh, the bonds that we issued in 2014. Those bonds were for all the road paving. We, probably paved 75, 80% of the roads in town all of, uh, in that course of that year or so. Uh, interest rates have hit historical lows. In fact, last week, I think they're probably as low as they've been. So we uh, we went to market this morning and uh, it looks like we've got interest, well, many interested uh, 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 potential uh, buyers of those. So Mr. Hopson, you have some details on that? I sure do. Uh, originally, we uh, were, were hoping for a savings of somewhere between three and $400,000 and the uh, post pricing call, uh, the assumption, the gross savings is closer to $560,838.25. So just refinancing the bond was over half a million dollars in savings. So we, uh, we've we looked at all, well, we don't have a whole lot of other ones out, but we looked at those and um, we had pretty favorable terms. So there, there was no savings there, but it certainly will be very beneficial with these very, very low rates going into uh, the bonding for the sidewalk. Uh, and other projects that we have. Um, and we will we'll look at uh, more of the numbers later as we go on. So, um, all right, any other communications? 
All right, under reports first, before we have any reports, I'd like to introduce our new public works director, Andy Rabb. Andy started last uh, week for us, and this is uh, his first full week on the job. And uh, you have a full report for tonight, Andy? Just a couple of things. Oh. <laughs> you know, the painting project that was already, that was already approved, it's going to be started in uh, Avenue H uh, Thursday. Nice. Go over to Roth. That schedule is going to start. We're going to see some of that happening around town um, and you know, commence over the next few weeks so we, so we can get that wrapped up. So just keep an eye that's, that will be started. Is that the, the Broad Street portion of the roads? Yeah. So okay. I've been waiting to do because of the piece of equipment they have to grind it and that little small piece first, and then they're going to start right there and that go right from Broad and enter. And okay. So they're going to do 45th to Rich Road on yeah. Broad Street. So yep. That'll be shortly right after the short road library. And we would ask, hopefully, we'd ask that they get finished by the 4th of July. Is that that's, look on schedule still? That's the direction. Oh, very good. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that, and that obviously continue on past that. Okay. Get that done. Um, we did have a couple of small water main breaks and impacted the people who were at dinner and uh, uh, bed brought over there. So that is finally done. And we finally got the water treatment. You know, we're back, we tested and we're back in business there. So a little, a little bit of cleanup. Um, obviously, we're still continuing to work on our, our water meters. We've got some water meters. Uh, Army Corps of Engineers got a meeting set up with them. We've got a report going at the end of March um, where we had their remedy a few things, that, uh, their annual report, which they're always fine. So uh, we're going to meet with them, go over our remedies, and we're going to go to Chicago. I'll be doing it with them in the Chicago office to address that. Um, Today we had a you know, pre-bid meet, potential meeting on the uh, reader road with water extension. We decided to you know, start that process and go forward with that future expansion in the part of town. Um, and then just a lot of things we're working, we're starting to look at better is, is we're trying to look at what we can do to utilize technology better in the department and then get some paper and uh, you know automate things and bring us up to a little higher level than we're currently at and get the So right, that's all I have. Great. And then to uh, just to expand a little bit on the water meters, I don't know if, if, if people have followed in the news, the federal government had uh, allocated quite a few, um, I guess, billions, maybe trillions of dollars, I'm not sure, towards uh, municipalities, townships, counties, etc. So Griffith's portion will be about $3.2 to $3.3 million. And some of the things we can use it for, are, are, they're limited, but one of them is water. So the thought is we would use those dollars to uh, pay for the water meters, which then would not result in uh, us having to either, in, either borrow or uh, uh, put it, increase the rates in order to compensate. The, the water meters could cost po possibly up to $2 million, maybe a little bit more, depending on where the bids come in at. And the other portion would be used to extend the water main along with uh, Reader Road, which uh, I think you know, we, we discussed it at length, and that's probably the best use of those dollars. So they go directly into the, the pockets of our, our citizens because otherwise we would have to figure out a way to pay for each water meter that gets reinstalled uh, over the next year or so when they get the process started. And one other reminder, if, you, if your water is not reading, we I guess we're up to 2000 meters that have failed uh, meter heads on it. Meters are working just fine. It's just radio heads on top are communicating properly. Please call in your meter, just take a picture of it, call it in. Um, whatever you need to do, otherwise you're going to get uh, could get some really shocking news if you, if you wait a year and uh, find out that the estimates were way off and you get a, a pretty high bill. So trying to avoid that, the best way to do is just simply call into readings. All right. Do we have anything, please? Yeah, as you're aware, the, uh, our police canine you know, passed away unexpectedly from diagnosed recently with cancer and had to be uh, put down as a result. Uh, we were anticipating his retirement at the end of the month, so we do have another canine that will be replacing the uh, So the program uh, has suffered a great loss, but it'll continue to put our canine thanks to the city council and the community. Okay, great, thank you. Any fire? Uh, I just want to take a moment to publicly thank uh, Deputy Chief Bell. He's uh, going to be moving to Texas and retiring on Sunday. So he's 26 years of service. So okay. Thank you, first. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Building Commissioner. No report, no sir. Report, and there is no finance report. All right. This time we'll take public comment on any end agenda items. If anybody has a comment or question on the agenda item before we vote on it, now would be the time to ask that. There will be time for public comment and anything else afterwards.
All right, we will go to directly to the uh, new business. Um, Ms. Robbins, you have the first item. I do. I have a motion to authorize President Rick Reitha to appoint Rob Bubala to the EMS board. Second it. We have a motion and second. Any discussion? All right, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. Uh, Mr. Hobson. It's that time uh, we have our property casualty and workers comp in uh, compensation insurance renewal. Uh, I'd like to, uh, Mr. Tom Brown has uh, presented us with a proposal. I'd like to authorize the clerk treasurer or town council president to enter in to the agreement for this insurance renewal. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? So we were seeing some very significant increases from our current carrier for the property and casualty uh, portion of it. Um, like if Tom, uh, Tom had negotiated some pretty good rates with uh, some some of the better companies, so he's uh, he's presented uh, some some pretty good terms to us, and we will be uh, most likely switching carriers this year. All right, Mr. Uh, Bally of the next set. Oh, no, Mr. Marker. I do have ordinance 2021-21, I believe. I went to 25. It's actually 25. It's in the backwards. Uh, this is a second reading, ordinance number 2021-25, ordinance of Indian town code, chapter 14, buildings and Building Regulations, Article 1 and Section 14-3. Where is the Town Council Cribbit? Have reviewed the relevant Town Code chapters and all ethical law now concurs that it's advisable, necessary, and in the best interest of the residents of Cribbit. The amendment be made in Chapter 14, Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 1 in general. God bless you. Section 14-2, entitled Building Department. And where is the Town Council Grid in the Anna Lake County having reviewed the relevant Town Code? that the amendment be made to chapter 14 buildings and building relations in general, intending building commissioner office duties. Essentially, this is created, creating a department in the town, which is under the direct supervision now of the town council. This department shall consist of the building commissioner, its inspectors, clerical staff, and any such employees as would be necessary to properly enforce any and all applicable ordinances and codes in the town. I make a motion to pass ordinance number 2021-25, second reading as a reminder. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. All right. Mr. Valley, of the next item. This is uh, supplemental agreement number one for design services for the Central Park Improvement Project. And just summarizing, the town of Griffith has an agreement with the engineering firm Butler Firm and Seifert for the design of the park improvements. However, some electrical work has been uh, added to that project and the cost for the electrical engineering was not in the original contract because we didn't know we were gonna do it. So therefore, uh, Butler Firm and Seifert has uh, consulted with uh, Nova Engineering to provide that uh, engineering for the electrical work. And it says now therefore to initiate the amended and additional design services for the project. Parties agree that the original um, agreement be further modified by the supplemental agreement number one. Therefore the not to exceed compensation for this work would be increased from $8,000. So the agreement goes from $26,600 to $34,600. And it's a, it's a reasonable fee. And I would make a motion that we authorize Council President Rick Reifer to uh, sign this supplemental agreement. I'll second. A motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Uh, Ms. Robbins, you have the next item. I do. I have an agreement between the town of Griffith and Butler, Fairman, and Seaford for the 2021 Community Crossings Matching Grant Program Assistant, whereas the owner the town of Griffith wishes to engage the engineer to provide cert certain services pertaining to, and the engineer represents that it has sufficient qualified personnel and equipment and is capable of performing the professional engineering services described herein. There is a the project description. Uh, BFNS will provide the town of Griffith with phases of professional service including phase one, assistant management 
assess management plan and application process, and phase two, post-award program, program assistant for the 2021 Community Crossing Grant Matching Program. I make a motion that we authorize um, President Rick Reifa to sign this agreement. A second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? In plain English, uh, the state offers a 50-50 match, uh, up to a million dollars uh, most every year for communities. We've been very fortunate to uh, to have a million dollars or whatever we needed every year to continue this. This is strictly for road paving. So we will uh, we'll continue to, uh, to pave the roads on our maintenance schedule as, uh, as planned. So any other comments? All right, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no, the motion carries. Mr. Hobson, you the next one. I do. I have uh, advertisement to bid 2021-1 road resurfacing projects. Um, again, this kind of goes goes along with with uh, that to where we can um, go ahead and advertise to bid for the projects that we're looking to do. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we uh, allow President Rick Reifa to sign this agreement. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All right, these uh, projects will be uh, out uh, available to look at until 2.30 uh, p.m. local time on Tuesday, August 17th. We would need those back by. So all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no, the motion carries. Uh, the next item, we have a series of public hearings related to the uh, the bonding required for the sidewalk project, as well as uh, the town hall public safety uh, facility uh, projects. So the first public hearing is a uh, preliminary uh, determination reimbursement resolution, or sorry, for a resolution for a sidewalk and street improvement project. Um, is there anybody here to speak uh, for or against those particular projects? Anybody here to speak for or against? All right, the, the public hearing, actually the public hearing is open. Um, is there anybody else that would like to speak? Right, the public hearing is closed. Um, we will now go on to the, the next public hearing. It would be for the preliminary determination reimbursement resolution um, for the 2021 uh, sidewalk and street improvement project, which would be part B. Is there, uh, I'd like to open up the public hearing for that. Is there anybody here to speak, uh, to remonstrate for or against it? All right, seeing no uh, no remonstrators, uh, the public hearing is closed. Um, next, we will have a public hearing for uh, the preliminary termination reimbursement resolution for the 2021 Town Hall Public Safety Facilities Renovation and Expansion Project. I would like to open up that public hearing for anybody to, to speak for or against. Yes, sir. I just have a question. What is it? What this would be is uh, okay. It would be a, a basically building a new town hall, police station, and um, some improvements to the, the fire stations, um, at least uh, the central fire station. Uh, these The building, if you go into the building and, and really take a walk through. There's some, some real uh, the issues with HVAC, a lot of mechanical issues. The old building's very old, it's real cut up. Uh, the police department has overgrown their, uh, their space for quite a number of years. We had originally looked at moving the police station up north to uh, some property, but the, the cost of the property acquisition was gonna be very prohibitive. So we, we looked at some other uh, options and. I think the best looks like the best thing we would do is we would build one building that would house both the police department on one side and the town hall offices on the other, and have some um, some open areas uh, hopefully for the, for various public uh, meetings or, or somebody that if they needed to utilize a, a room or a meeting room, you know, we can probably accommodate there. It would be it would be on this site closer to it would start off by Lafayette. Um, we would build over there, and once that gets built. We would uh, then demolish this, and uh, and add uh, one one big benefit is we would add additional parking. Mr. Bala has a, a very strong architectural background. Well, he's an architect. <laughs> so, he's an architect. so, Larry, if you can kind of <laughs> expand a little bit, you know, and I'll talk, you know, a little bit with the buildings, and, and more importantly, too, what what the additional parking spaces we've got a we do have an issue, which is a really big issue, nice issue to have downtown is 
we've got businesses screaming for parking spaces and we just don't have any. So this will uh, help solve part of that too, Mr. Bala. The uh, new building is projected to take up that back section behind this building. And it will also include uh, the new building, two-story building, new building with uh, dedicated parking for the police department and some dedicated parking for the town employees, court treasurer's office, building department, whatnot. And then the parking up front here after this building is demolished will be accessible off of Broad Street and will contain approximately 50 parking spaces. So there'll be adequate parking to use the new building to access it. And plus, like Rick said, we get additional parking for the downtown area. Um, about when is as soon as we get to, as soon as we choose an architect, uh, Mr. Ballas, he's graciously uh, uh, donated his time to, to put a lot of the, the initial stuff together before we hired an architect. So, I'd say probably within a month or two to, to get yeah, to there. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and then we would hold construction um, sometime next year if things go well. And uh, the amount is uh, we're hoping less than ten million, uh, probably. Just to, it's, uh, it, I know. Well, just to put in compare, uh, there, there was a police station built in another town that was more than that. We're going to have two buildings all in one. So <laughs> we're, uh, we're going to, we've, we've sharpened our pencils, believe me. We're, uh, we're, we're doing it. We're going to do it right, but we're, we're not going to overspend either on that. So we're still sharpening those pencils. Yes. <laughs> all right. Any other questions? Okay. All right. Um, the public hearing is closed. All right. Now we will go um, one more public hearing uh, uh, for, for ordinance 2021-21, uh, providing funds to pay for certain part projects and loose enough expenses. Um, this would be for um, a multitude of, uh, of projects that we're looking at doing. Uh, the Parks Department simply doesn't have a capital budgets fund. They, they, they don't have one and they've never had one. So uh, when, when improvements are made, then typically we'd have to go through a, a borrowing process and then pay it off and then start other improvements down the road. So this will include um, a, quite a few improvements at Central Park, um, especially uh, the first one you'll see is uh, on the, the, the north end of the park. There will be a, a decorative fence put up uh, with many openings. So it won't be closing off the park along with around an 80 to uh, 80 by 40 ish uh, patio uh, with a small pavilion on it. We're looking at making it uh, handicap accessible as well with some sidewalks inside the park to uh, coincide with other improvements that are coming down the road. The other one will be a, a project on the 100 block of South Broad Street along the bike trail. Um, this goes in part to satisfying a, a, a lawsuit, a settlement agreement from a lawsuit from probably a decade plus ago. Um, the town had agreed to make improvements to the parking lot back there. In exchange, uh, they have the suit dropped and we also acquired a, um, several of the lots back there as well. So this will, uh, will, will pretty much put like a, a big trailhead, probably a patio with seating for 50 to 80 people. Um, we haven't got the exact numbers on that yet, but it'll, uh, it'll invite everybody off the bike path into our downtown. And that should be a, a big benefit for our, our, our local businesses, just to bring foot traffic, bicycle, or whatever, whatever would come there. So those were the two main ones. Um, also, we will be paving the, the bike trail from border to border. And uh, there, I'm trying to think, uh, Jake, is there anything else that I missed? Yeah. Okay, all right. So that would be, uh, that would be, those would be, um, that we hope to start by the end of the year, hopefully completed uh, the first portion by uh, next May and the, uh, the trailhead as, uh, as soon as we get the bid documents out, we had, we've been working on that for about a year, but we ran into some NIPSCO, NIPSCO issues with some easements and pipelines underneath there. So I think that the engineers have worked their way through that and we hope to get that out done as well. So it'll be uh, some nice facelifts for, uh, for the town. Any other uh, questions on that? All right, well, the, the public hearing is closed on that. All right, Mr. Bala. How much is this do you want, Rhett? 
This is uh, basically, um, just, I would go by the title. These are, we've got a series of resolutions that are uh, that coincide with each of the four public or five public hearings we have, whatever we have here, so. Okay, this is resolution number 2021-28, a preliminary determination reimbursement resolutions of the town council of the town of Griffith, Indiana. And this pertains to the 2021A sidewalk and street improvement project. And this, uh, if anybody would like to read this, I'll leave you my copy. Makes for great reading if you have insomnia. Uh, it's basically the bond issues that we, we've talked about and discussed over the last few months. So uh, I'm gonna make a motion that we adopt resolution 2021-28 for the sidewalk improvement. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <clears throat> and uh, just so there's a sidewalk, there's a portion A, sidewalk portion B. This uh, portion A, I believe, is from the railroad tracks, painting national tracks to the east. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then the, the side of the other one, obviously, would be from the sidewalk from railroad tracks to the west. So, any other comments? All right, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion carries. I'm going to piggyback on what Mr. Bala just said. I have resolution 2021-29, a preliminary determination reimbursement resolutions of the town council of the town of Griffith, <coughs> Indiana, 2021-B sidewalk and street improvement pot project. This has to do with the bonds that we were talking about, and this is the project that is west of the North-South Railroad tracks operated by the CNA, uh, CNA, CN Railway. Make a motion that we approve resolution number 2021-29. Second. The motion and second, is there any discussion? Um, just so we've, we've said it, and we've been talking about this for many months, but just if, if anybody hadn't heard, um, just about anywhere in town, if, you're, if your sidewalk isn't good, it's gonna be replaced though. We're going to get the bids in. The, the thought is we're replacing most of the sidewalks will be at a block at a time or several blocks at a time. But if uh, it's, just, it's going to, we're going to see what the quotes are, but it's, we're hearing that it's going to be cheaper. Say if we've got 12 houses on a block and 11 of them needed sidewalks, it's, it's going to be cheaper just to do the, all the 12 because of the forming, the way the construction comes out and everything else. So we anticipate that. Uh, in these two segments of the project, probably 90% or maybe even more of the sidewalks would be totally replaced. And Jake, does that uh, sound about right? And that was, uh, we had um, surveys done or we had uh, engineering crews walk the, the town, document it all. We've got lots of pictures of uh, the area. And the other part of it is this will include insulation of ADA ramps on all the intersections that are required. The town just as every other town is, we're all under a federal mandate to have all those in place. We, we need to have a plan in place in order with the feds you know, to, to continue to see any you know, federal dollars. So this will uh, accomplish that as well as everybody will get a new sidewalk and hopefully uh, uh, we, we won't have any lawsuits prior to that for anybody who trips on the sidewalk because they, they saw some pretty bad areas out there. So, all right, any other comments? All right, all in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no, the motion carries. Uh, Mr. Hobson. Follow that up with resolution number 2021-30, preliminary determination slash reimbursement resolutions of the town council of the town of Griffith, Indiana. This is the 2021 town hall slash public safety facilities renovation and or expansion project. Again, as, as Rick talked about for a few minutes there, uh, this is to build a new um, town hall police station and to improve the fire station. I'd like to go ahead and make a motion that we pass and adopt 2021-30. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. <clears throat> motion carries. Mr. Mercury, you have the last ordinance. I do. I have ordinance number 2021-21. I believe this is the first reading. Uh, ordinance to the Town Council of the Town of Griffith, Indiana, authorized the issuance of general obligation bonds for the purpose of providing funds to pay for certain park projects and incidental expenses in connection therewith and on account of issuance of the bonds and appropriating 
the pursuits thereof. This again is the bond for the parks not to exceed 3,760,000. Again, this is the first reading. Thank you. All right, uh, the next item before uh, Mr. Uh, Byler introduces it, uh, we do have um, uh, Mr. Bruce uh, Breeden here from uh, Telemann. Uh, he is, uh, I guess, as, as expert as you could be in solar farms. Um, they, uh, they've installed many throughout the, the Midwest and different areas. And we have a proposal to look at to put a, a small solar farm on the golf course. Uh, some things we have to deal with there. It's uh, there's wetland, which means we can never really build on that. Um, and uh, Bruce, if you wanted to give uh, a short summary of what the projected project proposal is and the savings that the town would receive, I would be happy to. The solar project would go along Pine Avenue, just east of Pine, uh, as far north as we are allowed to. Obviously, the Army Corps of Engineers and the Federal government allows solar panels to be placed in a flood plain, but no one can build anything in the flood way. We will be working with Christopher Burke, who is the engineering firm. Uh, you know, Jimmy's on or not, she's going to call in uh, to actually locate exactly where the panels are going to go. Anticipated total cost is 1.7 million. Over the 35 year life of the solar panels, it will save the community 14.2 million dollars. And just to uh, to show how those savings would be, I, get, I believe the, the laws or the requirements are you know, we need to be within a thousand feet of the solar panels in order to recoup all the, the costs. Right. So we're right now we're paying NIPSCO about $280,000 to operate um, our sanitary facility up there with all the electricity and everything else associated with that. So this would actually put, we would expect to receive more in credit, including in credits, than we it would pay for the electricity that we're using, plus we receive credits, correct? Correct. During the winter time, you will still burn those credits or utilize those credits based on the extra electricity that is produced during the summer. Okay. Correct. So, um, but yes, the electricity is all used at Andy's utility facility. Okay. You can't come down to the new town hall or yeah. you can't transport something like that. And uh, just very simply put, so we're spending about 200. Maybe 290, it was, it's going to be about $300,000 as, as a round number where we're going to be with inflation coming up and you know, it increases the next couple of years. So we're spending about 300 grand a year writing checks to MIPS before that. Um, this is going to cost $1.7 million to engineer and install. So in five years, we'll actually be, uh, uh, it'll already paid for itself and then we'll have no MIPS go bill. So we won't be having a bill for $300,000. So we'll, we'll have very significant savings. and that would be reflected into the sanitary rates uh, within five years from now. So whoever's here, make sure you make sure that uh, they uh, take into account that uh, town saving $300,000 a year on the sanitary charges. So, all right, um, Mr. Bala. Uh, in line with what the uh, uh, presentation was about, I have in front of me an agreement from uh, Telemann Enterprises Ventures LLC to provide professional services for this project. And I'm gonna make a motion that we submit this to our town attorney and town engineer for review before we vote on it. Second. Motion and a second. So we could, uh, we will uh, engage Christopher Burke to look at this further and we'll review the contracts and uh, we'll bring this up at the next meeting. All in favor of the next motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. The next item is uh, for a lighting analysis. And I believe uh, Tony. I have Mr. that. Mr. Osmond, you have that? I do. Uh, it's agreement for professional services. Uh, it's a lighting analysis. Um, the same uh, Telemann uh, group, uh, they, can, they can do an analysis on. Uh, replacing lights and moving to LED and things like that, that will save the town significant uh, dollars. Um, I have a, a not to exceed $7,500 for uh, to perform the lighting analysis. I would like to go ahead and make a motion that we enter into an agreement uh, for this analysis. Second. Great, we have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? And this will look at um, all the municipal buildings, the lighting there, as well as the signalization 
Um, we saw some numbers. Uh, I was shocked at the, the kind of dollars we got to pay in electric bills just for the street lights, or the signalization lights. So I think we're looking at some, some very, very significant dollars that would be saving. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get a report on that fairly soon. Um, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion carries. All right, that was the last item under new business, under pending items. So. Mr. President? Yes. It was brought to my attention by a very wise individual that ordinance number 2021-21 has gone through at least two readings already. So I'd like to make a motion passing ordinance 2021-21. This again is for the park projects, not to exceed 3,760,000. Make a motion to pass ordinance 2021-21. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. This is to actually pay for the projects, to allow the authorization to pay for those. Um, anybody have any comments or? All right, all in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no, the motion carries. All right, we will now go to uh, the pending items, uh, the sidewalk replacement program. We've discussed uh, the airport advisory committee. I would anticipate, uh, uh, if not, uh, this week, uh, early next week, there'll be some notices sent out to the members in order to uh, uh, schedule their first meeting. And uh, Mr. George Jerome has uh, is, is the chairman of that, and he will be uh, working with Michelle to get out those um, notices. Hammond Waterworks Agreement, we're still uh, negotiating with Hammond to, to get a final settlement. Uh, we, we, we know what the rates are going to be. Uh, they aren't going to be, uh, they're going to be raised almost double the first year and uh, probably uh, uh, maybe I think they were paying about 50 cents. So I think they're going up to 95 cents the first year. It's going to escalate and finish around the dollar 90 or dollar 95. Jerry, is that sound about right in, in year 10? I was going to say in a lot of years. I mean, okay. So we're, we're look, we'll be looking at a dollar, about a dollar 50 per 1000 gallons increase um, over the next 10 years. Uh, with the first big hit coming for uh, for this year, so we are reviewing uh, as we speak. Our uh, one of our financial firms are reviewing, doing a rate analysis. We're trying to minimize any rate increase to uh, all of our uh, residents, but uh, there will be something coming. We're just not sure how much, and we're going to try to keep it as reasonable as we can. All right. Any other items from the council? All right, open the floor for public comment. If anybody has a comment or a question, just please state your name. Yes. <laughs> I, excuse me, Mr. McGinnis, if you want to address the, the council. We could, uh, Sherry, I'm not sure how we go back and amend notes, but we could certainly put it in this meeting minutes to refer, we'll, be, we'll refer back to those. Um, you know, it, it was a third party uh, discussion, so we didn't speak with the, the state on that.
We can look at that, but yeah, we were we were also told that it looked like you had something resolved with the state. Well, but they, the state didn't even have the Okay. I, one thing I would uh, request from you is if you could please, in writing, um, point out the ordinance and uh, where you where you believe it should be eleven thousand dollars. Just so we have, we've got. Uh, well, we'll have fresh eyes on it. Let's take a look at it. We'll have uh, our, our attorneys review that, and then uh, within uh, you know two to four weeks, we should have an answer for you. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and it triggers, uh, you know, lighting analysis and, and park uh, improvements on the agenda. It triggers, uh, um, when you cross Broad Street, uh, the Friday night festival that we have, when you cross Broad Street in front of the tank, uh, there's not much lighting. Okay. And I know that I'm sure I'm not the first guy uh, to bring this up, but it is dark there. You know, the street light helps at Pine Street. Um, and when you combine the fact that the church, a lot of parking is back there. I think you guys, if there's a bunch of work being done around the park, I think lighting should be considered. It's okay. dark there, and, and if you pay attention there on a Friday night, yeah. Okay. They can be dangerous, but just, uh, just an idea. All right, we will take, we'll take a look at that. Okay. All right. Yes, sir. Hi, my name is John Watson. I just want to point out, I didn't mean to be rude to this gentleman about asking you what. No, that's fine. This I still is... don't understand. Okay. Okay. Um... Okay, I'll give you a quick review. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's fine. We just we just try to keep the conversation going this way instead of that way. So, all right. Briefly, he uh, he owned he uh, had recently purchased or not recently he purchased a uh, a mobile home park outside of town limits in Calumet Township. Um, the septic tank has failed. The state uh, was not happy about it. Uh, the state had contacted the town of Griffith in no uncertain terms asking us to accept them into our sanitary system. Uh, we had agreed to do so. Uh, with that, uh, the previous uh, public works director had a, a list of fees um, and that has been a part of the, the debate since then is uh, Mr. McGinnis feels our ordinance states that the fees are, are much less than what he was presented. We had agreed to work with him and meet somewhere in the middle if we can't uh, come to uh, the resolution what the fee should be. So that's where we stand right now. And uh, we hope to get this resolved because, you know, Mr. McGinnis, it's nice seeing you here once in a while, but. Uh, <laughs> 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 Have you met Andy Rab yet? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Andy yet? Okay, wonderful. Mr. President, we also have uh, Ms. Bottinger here doing a report for the government. Oh, great, okay. All right. You're welcome. Okay, very good. All right, any other comments or questions? Yes, sir. Uh, so I think I... Can we get your name? Uh, Mark Jankowski. Okay. Uh, I've actually been going through Brooklyn and yeah. Dallas, uh, just with regards to the Red Barn Bill uh, and their bans, posting more and more frequency of this in the board with issues every night. Um, they're, just to put it in perspective, if we're sitting here, we'd be listening to karaoke from the 80s. And I called in uh, to the police, and I understand they can't do anything really about it. They asked me to turn it down, but I mean, I've had situations where the police officer standing next to me in my driveway, and we're listening to you. So I tried to, before I even called anybody, before I emailed you guys, I went in and I talked to them, like, you know, you're, you guys are blasting this stuff directly at us. And, you know, I know from their perspective, it looks like they're in the middle of nowhere, but right behind those trees is, you know, 30 homes. And so I'm 
So, I to come in person and actually okay, sure. And again, I just so I believe, you know, I have forwarded it to our, yeah. our police department. I believe uh, Detective or uh, Commander Martin uh, reached out to you. Um, and they were going to be contacting and go visiting the, you know, the, the yeah. establishment. Has has that made a difference since yeah. they spoke to him? It, it okay. Okay, where, where uh, without your exact address, but how far, which direction do you live from there? I'm, I'm right over uh, Avenue H, okay. So it's, the music in that, actually the first time that officer went out to check it, they can hear the music at nice and So okay. that's 2,800 feet. Yep, yeah, okay. So, so are it's you- been confirmed by, it's not just us, you know, being sensitive about it, a police officer actually confirmed that he went even further than our street. But I'm on James Road, Okay. And then you're in unincorporated St. John Township, correct? Okay. So Chief Mance, did you have a, a chance to discuss with the Commander Martin this yet? Yeah, it's it's being tossed. I mean, everyone's looking at it. Part of the issue is uh, I, what officer you said went to Mexico because that report I read said they went to Mexico and didn't hear the, It was like the very first time because I, I, before I called it in, I actually stopped by and I talked to an officer and he went out to them and then went to the next one, which would have been like the very first time. Uh, so I didn't even call 911 that when I stopped by here, talked to the officer, about what was going on, you know, how to proceed forward. I mean, these issues are, are it seems simple, but they are somewhat complicated. Uh, last few times we called, the officer kept going out and they spent a lot of time on it actually going to different locations. And they're just, the last few reports, they're just not given them the burden that they need to try to take that. It's so, something we're going to continue to pursue. I know I want to talk to Commander Moore, who's in charge of patrol uh, tomorrow morning, and have him just look at the van schedule. Instead of waiting for you to call, we're going to just spend some time checking out, checking out the area. Oh, here's, here's the thing that, that I'm having an issue with is uh, I'm trying to understand the word. And I know that I'm I'm not part of Crip. Like, I have an address of Crip. But like the way I read the ordinance, it's not a matter of if I can hear it, it's a matter of what's producing. So the way that I read it is it shouldn't cross boundaries. And here we're talking about seven boundaries over 2,000 feet. That noise that they're producing with loudspeakers is getting to me. So like the chances are I can't speak for anybody that's way closer. But if they weren't amplifying the music, I would never hear it. But the fact that there's, you know, for I think their patio area is not better than this room. They're blasting out like concert quality music out towards the street. So that's where I, I'm trying to retain your ordinance is to say, why is this even being allowed? Like, because it's obviously passing boundaries. I mean, the ordinance is the problematic ordinance because there are several, several areas that violate it on a future basis. So right. That's something that needs to be examined by the, by the council and acting. So just just so in your case though, I think we'll uh, we'll we'll reach out and I, I know the the owners there too. I'll I'll speak with them as well. I think part of it is they don't realize that the sound is carrying like that. The when I was there once a couple of years ago, and it you know it obviously it goes straight south. So they don't set up their own sound. They have whoever's setting up the band. Some of these guys like to hear themselves play real loud, oh, yeah. and sometimes they don't. And actually, the, the first time that I, I stopped out there, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, I, she was very polite, and that night they actually turned it down to a little loud. Yeah. I'm like, okay, well, this is nice and muffled, and I can live with this. So, but the second time I saw right. it, no, we'll, we'll stop and talk to them and see. It, uh, it, a lot of it, you know, manager goes home, the owner goes home, and sometimes the music goes up. So, yeah. you know, there's a lot of things that are going on. So, all right. Okay. Yeah. Anybody? Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, I've been done. For the uh, sidewalk project, um, great. Is there any opportunity for residents to say, hey, my driveway could be up to the street for them to be 50 50 or something to do that? Uh, we would have loved to do that. It would have been a, a logistical nightmare. So, you know, a, a two year project could probably turn into 10 years if, if we did that. We looked at what we talked to the contractors, engineers, um, even thought, you know, can we? figure out a way for the contractors to work. We would have to work directly with the homeowners, um, but that would just, it would just slow up the project so much for them to include that into this work. I would say contact uh, whoever gets awarded. You can contact them ahead of time, see if they'd be interested in pouring your drive. 
it would be easier for us if the, the drives are ripped out and reported, you know, whoever the homeowner decides to pay. But once we award the contract, uh, we'll try to have that information if, uh, if the, the winning contract is, is open for that. So, Jake, did you uh, have anything to add to that? No, I think that's exactly right. As long as the contract is under the contract list, it doesn't mean specifically for that we're not flying the driveway. And we are working on an extensive program to communicate with uh, with each uh, homeowner. Um, hopefully, you know, anywhere from the two weeks, you know, your, your title box can be pulled out in two weeks, a week, and then the next day, they'll be we're going to work with signage. It's going to be on the website. Uh, we should have maps of uh, everything on there. We'll be walking, or now we will be our engineers or our project manager will be walking a couple weeks ahead of time with each segment, uh, just to make sure there's no surprises. And uh, and I think we'll be either door hangers as well as uh, every you know, other ways to communicate with the homeowners just to make sure. The last thing we want is somebody to get uh, locked into their driveway when their sidewalk gets pulled out. So, all right. Any other? Yes. Yeah, kind of under the, the other uh, question as far as so the county is just a county. These are all awesome projects. You have sidewalks and their parks. You have you know two three three years. Sixty thousand people is not going to hear. <laughs> there's been there's been a lot of talk in fact there's not been a talk there's been we're taking uh, we're implementing things um the, the the goal is to have it on the website updated uh at, as often as can uh, the daily might not be an option but certainly uh, every week we'll have uh, the upcoming uh, segments that will be pulled or, or started uh, we'd like to give a two-week notice uh and unfortunately, it's going to be dependent on weather or what they find out in the field. But we'd like to let two weeks ahead of time as we approach. Uh, we want a 24 hour to 48 hour notice that uh, years will be uh, taken out that next day or the following day. Uh, you know, we don't want to have people not parking in their driveways for a week because they think the sidewalk is going to be started as well. We looked at you know, we looked at every angle. It's one thing we've always tried to do as a town is communicate as best we can and or actually do it very effectively to the residents. And this would be the same thing. So thought is you go to the website, you click on your segment, you'll see it green, yellow, or red uh, to let you know where the, the progress would be. Um, but that's something we have to work out with the contractors. And once that award is, is given, then we can uh, work with them to implement something. So when we don't know who the, who's going to win that yet. So once, once that's done, that'll be part of the project. All right. Any other comments or questions?